Welcome back once again to Broken Electronics in the never-ending saga of upgrading my 1.1 Mac Pro to a 2.1 Mac Pro. If you've seen the first two videos in this little mini-series, uh, you will have seen that things very often just don't go the way they should. Anyhow, that prompted me to do a great deal more research about the topic of this video the SMC upgrade. And that should be relatively easy to accomplish because the files were there from Netcast rather than having to download them from Apple. And one just uses the commands as given in the thread with one exception which should become clear. And, well, Maybe it will actually work this time. Only one way to find out. Please stay tuned. Well, welcome back. And it has been a really long couple of days. I apologize that I'm kind of out of it at this point. Anyhow, we have successfully, after quite a struggle, upgraded the processors on the machine to two 3 gigahertz quad-core processor for a total of eight cores. That's a good thing. We then, after a bit of a struggle, got the uh, firmware updated. So the machine now correctly identifies itself as 2,1 and recognizes those CPUs correctly. A very good thing. All right then. We have two files here, smcflasher.efi, m43a.smc. All right, these files have been edited to work on this machine by a user on the Netcast forums. And if you follow Greg's tutorials, and I'll try to do it here in my description, you will find a link to get to the Netcast forums, and you're looking for the second post by a member named Bunga Bunga, where he gives downloads to these two files, which he has corrected in the hex editor. All right. Now, what you're supposed to do is move those two edited files onto a flash drive which must be formatted in FAT. I don't think XFAT is going to work. It has to be in FAT, but that can be done easily in Disk Utility. Uh, all right. And you'll need to go to the Refit website, and I'll try to put a link to that as well, uh, where you'll download Refit. Refit is uh, a replacement bootloader. Uh, you will be greeted with the warning that it is not under current development. That really doesn't matter. We're doing this in Lion. It's working fine in Lion. So I would just go ahead, download it, and install it. All right. Now, one, one word of warning, and I keep forgetting this. Uh, Refit does not recognize the mouse. So you have to deal solely with the keyboard. Uh, and that's true when you get into the EFI shell as well. All right, so all we need to do then is reboot the machine, and we should come up in refit. There's a chime, and refit is coming up. Now, I have to hit the right arrow key until we arrive at start EFI shell. Okay, so we are going to do what Greg says at first, type SMC colon, 
invalid mapping name. It doesn't work. Okay, so a, a user, a viewer of Greg's videos named Jean-Paul discovered the, the answer here. So we will type map. And we'll see a listing of all of our hard disks and two removable disks. Now, you can go to those disks, uh, but I'm just going to take a guess. The only two removable disks that could be there would be the flash drive and the optical drive. So, I'm going to try putting in BLK8 colon. And here we are on BLK8. Now, we can see what happens if we list. Aha! I was exactly right. By hitting L, by typing LS, we see a list of what's on. And there's our two files, the SMC flasher.efi and m43a.smc. All right, now, it is important that I type the next command correctly. So, bear with me. I'm going to pause the video here uh, and take my time to make sure I do it right in this crazy setup that I've got here. Please stay tuned. Okay, I really hope I got this right. smcflasher.efi space hyphen load app space m43a dot smc. And taking our life in our hands, we're going to hit enter. And this, this was exactly the warning I got that the fans were going to ramp up to full and that should be considered normal. And your SMC was successfully updated. Oh. How about that? That easy. Okay. So, I'm going to get this machine booted back up into Lion. We'll be back with you once we're on Lion Desktop. And we return to Lion Desktop. Come on, help me out here about this Mac. More info. System report. And model identifier, 2,1. Quad-core Intel Xeon, 3 gigahertz. As it says up here, 2 by 3 gigahertz, quad-core Intel Xeon. So that's identified correctly. The boot ROM version is correct. And the SMC version has been updated. So, this is very successful. Now, I'm going to reboot the machine into uh, El Capa 10. Uh, it's very easy to remove refit. Tell you the truth, I think I'm going to leave it on. Unless I see it causing some other problems. Uh, so, it should, if I'm reading things correctly, only come into play when you boot into, into Lion. Uh, otherwise, and that might be handy, my only reason for ever booting into Lion, I never really liked the operating system, my only reason to boot into Lion is very simply to fix a problem, and refit could be a very handy tool in doing such fixing. Well, anyway, we should be back on the El Capitan desktop. Stay tuned. All right, so we can go back to screen recording again. I shouldn't have to reboot during all of this. Uh, we're obviously on the El Capitan desktop again. We want to verify that our changes have taken hold. And we see processor 2 by 3 gigahertz quad core Intel Xeon, whereas before it simply said unknown. If we go to system report, I can verify that this, it, first of all, we see model identifier Mac Pro 2, 1, so the firmware update took hold. 
and the SMC version, 1.15F3, is the correct SMC version for 2 comma 1. So, finally everything has been successful. Uh, and this one actually went really according to plan. Uh, so, I think we're good. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, since this has been a fairly short video. I think I can take the time to do this uh, and run a quick Geekbench. Geekbench. There we go. Now, of course, uh, this takes a few minutes to run. You don't need to do that. But we should hopefully see a distinct difference um, in Geekbench performance based on this. All right. Once again, stay tuned. Okay, the benchmarks have run. Uh, just for completeness sake, I ran the uh, the compute test and <laughs> the score went down a little bit. Well, now, of course, if you've ever run uh, benchmarks, uh, you will know perfectly well that these do not stay the same from one time running the test to another. Uh, so that's well within the the range that you might get in running multiple tests and it is of course the same GPU all right now here's you know where we have things that are interesting in single core score it is mm, a little less than a hundred points and again that can vary from from time to time through the scores uh, of an improvement. Now, of course, that's the thing. It is single core. It doesn't matter that this is an eight core and back here this was a four core. It only matters that this is a three gigahertz uh, CPU and this is a 2.66 gigahertz CPU. Uh, not worth being concerned about. Now, here's where we see the difference. Uh, this, this is a substantial difference because, of course, we're going to eight cores from four cores. I would suspect that if we ran these multiple times, we might see these scores increase a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. And it's interesting to see that Geekbench has correctly identified the Mac Pro 1,1 and up here in the more recent test, post upgrades, Mac Pro 2 comma 1. All right, but wait, there's more. I'm going to do one more clip with this. Uh, I'm going to do some real world tests. Uh, what I want to do is set the machine to folding and see what kind of improvement there is. Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to put a side-by-side -side comparison of the two because uh, I didn't think to save that. However, I can tell you, you know, my late mother-in-law's 2009 iMac is folding and it usually gets something within the 4,000 points a day. Uh, depending on what it's doing at any given time, maybe higher, maybe lower. Now this machine, of course, is three years older, but it is a Mac Pro. So uh, this machine would run mm, about in the 6,000 points a day somewhere. Uh, might occasionally dip below that, but usually somewhere in the 6,000s. So I'm going to set it to fold. It's going to take a little while for it to uh, ramp itself up and really tell us what it's capable of doing. So we'll come back. Once it's been fully for a couple of hours, I am just going to eat dinner. So please stay tuned.
Well, no, that didn't take long at all. It really only had to finish the last task that it had uh, prior to my shutting it down to do the upgrades. And take a look at where it's gone. I said it had been in the 6,000 range, probably the low 6,000s most of the time. It's now at 23,162. Now, th this number is not consistent. Uh, that's going to change. It may change even while I'm recording this clip. Uh, but still, the, the point is certainly well taken. We went from about 6,000 to, as a result of the combination of speed of the processors and doubling the number of cores, 23,000. It's almost four times the production, which is you know, way past what Geekbench was telling us, which is why real-world tests are always good. Now, as I say, this, this will change you know, during the day, depending on what the machine is, is actually doing at any given uh, time. But, wow. Just, wow. <laughs> okay, so, if your question is, should I actually do such an upgrade? Well, if you've got a 1, 1 that's still on dual cores, if you use that machine at all, really, for much of anything, this is a really, really, really worthwhile upgrade. So that's about all I have for, for this for now. Uh, I'm glad we took the time to to get a look at what the machine is doing post-upgrade. Uh, so I think we're going to end the video right here. Be good to other people. They certainly deserve it. Be good to yourselves. You especially deserve it. Take very good and careful care in these still difficult times. This has been Broken Electronics, and we'll be back with more videos, quite a few more, very, very soon.